The sea is a rich source of protein, especially when it comes to fish. Singapore is home to many seafood lovers and houses many big and reputable seafood restaurant names. Fish, crabs, prawns, cockles, you name it, Singapore has it. While such seafood can often be easily found in street stalls and hawker centres, there is one particular seafood that is priced significantly higher than the rest. That is none other than the shark's fin soup. Shark's fin soup is a delicacy in Singapore and is usually only eaten during special or important occasions like weddings or large-scale corporate dinners. However, it's becoming harder and harder to find this exquisite soup on restaurant menus these days. Many restaurants island-wide have begun to ban the sale of shark's fin soup. But why? Many Singaporeans believe that fishermen out at sea catch sharks only for their fins. Many also believe that sharks are finned alive before being thrown back into the ocean to die. Videos and articles about this cruel practice have been created in the past. Holding on to such media does not paint a realistic picture of what happens today. They have convinced many to think that this inhumane and illegal practice still exists. So, is there really a need to ban shark's fin soup? What really goes on behind closed doors? To know how Singapore gets its seafood and shark's fin, we first need to ask ourselves where it comes from. The port of Vigo, northeast of Spain. It's the biggest and one of the busiest fishing ports in the world. The port is ideally positioned and has been the leading seafood port in Galicia for many years now. Vigo, which was first settled as a small fishing village, is now home to over 3,000 international fishing vessels. Vigo attracts fishing boats from across the seas arriving at Vigo to sell their catch, or as a starting point en route to other European destinations. Many cruise liners call in to the port each year, bringing with them large quantities and varieties of fish. Vigo is thus reputed to have the best fish and seafood in the world. Es importante porque en Galicia pues existe una de las flotas más importantes de pesca de palangre a nivel ya no diría nacional, sino mundial y es eh, una fuente de riqueza y de recursos para todos los que nos dedicamos a este bueno, a ese tipo de pesca. Bueno, nos dedicamos a este tipo de pesca porque es nuestra vida, los barcos están preparados para este tipo de pesca. Hay barcos que se dedican a la pesca de, de arrastre, nosotros nos dedicamos al palangre y es una forma de vida como otra cualquiera. Bueno, España es tradicionalmente un país de, de consumo de pescado por tradición y el tiburón y la aquella, pues habitualmente en España tampoco es un pescado de consumo habitual. Nosotros la mayoría de las capturas que traemos exportan otras que hay en el mercado nacional. Actualmente una marea como esta ahora nosotros llegamos ayer de la mar y estuvimos en la mar 73 días. 73 días y pescamos, bueno, entre las aguas aquí en el Atlántico Norte, en aguas internacionales del Atlántico Norte, eh, entre las Islas Azores y la costa americana. Pero habitualmente hacemos mareas de entre 60 y 70 días de mar, si me a puerto, claro. Bueno, evidentemente la pesca objetivo nuestra es en principio el pez espada, pero no hay capturas suficientes como para poder rentabilizar la, la marea solo con pez espada. Entonces pues nos dedicamos también a la pesca de, de, de tiburón e incluso algo de atún también. An issue linked with shark fishing includes the overfishing of certain species of sharks and its impacts on the marine ecosystem. Sharks are apex predators that keep other fish populations balanced. Wiping out a key species of fish could disrupt the entire food chain in the marine ecosystem. Because of this, fishermen try to fish such that shark populations are kept healthy. It's a common misconception that sharks are caught only for their fins. While many believe that sharks caught are finned and thrown back into the sea to die, what is practiced today speaks differently. Nosotros no hacemos finning ni nunca hicimos. Nosotros pescamos, eh, defendemos de hecho la pesca responsable. No somos piratas de, de mar. 
porque queremos pescar hoy y pescar mañana. Si hacemos finning, tenemos pan para hoy y hambre para mañana. Nosotros queremos pescar hoy, que mis hijos sigan pescando y que mis, los hijos de mis hijos sigan pescando. Vivimos de la pesca, de la pesca de la legal. No, que oye, que lo que sea, que no somos, eh, no somos eh, grandes empresas, somos empresas familiares y depende mucha gente de nosotros. Y nosotros dependemos de mucha gente. O sea, que no, no somos multinacionales que, que nos queremos hacer ricos. Vivimos, pescamos para vivir, nada más. Responsible fishing is very important. But so is the processing and exportation of the fishery products. The process is intricate and accounts for every product. I'm just in charge of all the process from the fishing boats until we get them ready for export. And basically, even this is not uh, our main business, it's just an overall idea over how we work here. From the fishing boats, we have two ways of receiving the films before we purchase the narocs. The first thing that they do uh, is unloading the fish and classifying by size. If you see the fish, it's already, uh, the fish are already being cut. So you can see that on, the, on this blue shark is no tail, it's no pectoral, it's not dorsal. So what they do is already uh, classify uh, the different species uh, on different jails. And basically the main species that we work here is with blue shark. What they do is uh, prepare them on the on the jails, weigh them, they have to match the fish with the fishing boats, and after they go to auction, they auction the best bidder uh, by the auction, by the fish, and then is when we get into the process. It's, uh, as processors and as traders, we start our process that is classify the fish basically and get the ready for our customers in Asia. Uh, the fins go for Asia, but main uh, species that we unload, fish species that we unload in Vigo, they are the blue shark, the mako shark, and after we have swordfish, we have oil fish, we have many of them. And all of them, as you see there, they, you can see the bodies here. We don't throw them to the sea. They come here, and we go, it goes into the process, and we do slices, in Spain, is everything very much in control. That is why now the, in the European Union is trying to even go further. And that's the fight now about the regulations that we have here, about what is reasonable and what is not, but very much in control. The port of Vigo closely monitors its catch and has an array of documentations to validate and certify its practices. The port also documents their catch in detail down to the type of species caught and the distribution of catches. As listed in the documents shown, the various species of fishes are recorded. Ranging from cod to tuna, the respective weight in kilograms, European value and respective average prices are all documented for clarity. There is a variety of methods of fishing one of the most efficient and popular ways of fishing is long-line fishing. We are dedicated to the fish of palangre of superficie. And, as it is, we have a mother line of 40 or 45 miles of longitude, from which we depend on every 80 or 90 meters, pues a brazo lada with an anzuelo, and there is where O sea, vamos nosotros un poco encima del pescado, pero es una pesca también un poco de suerte, no tiene que venir el pescado hacia nosotros. Nos dejamos eso ahí tendido, es una trampa que le tendemos al, al pescado y ellos tienen que morder los anzuelos. Es una lilia madre, ya le digo, de 50, 45 o 50 millas de longitud, de la cual cada 80 o 90, 90 metros pues pende un anzuelo. Ya, pues, habitualmente en un barco de este tipo, de estas características, trabajamos 11, 11 personas, de las cuales pues eh, dos somos oficiales de puente, dos oficiales de máquinas, un cocinero y seis marineros que son los que se dedican al tratamiento y a la elaboración del pescado. Long line fishing is a commercial fishing technique that uses a long and relatively wide net that has baited hooks attached to them. These nets are set out to attract big fishes such as tuna, swordfish, halibut and sablefish. The type of fishing line used is monofilament, which is made from a single fiber of plastic. Most fishing lines are monofilament because they are generally cheaper to produce 
and can be produced in a range of diameters. Monofilament fibers can be made sturdy in order to help reel in bigger fish. Fish that are hauled aboard are usually individually cleaned, washed and iced at sea. With fresh catch, fishing vessels can stay at seas for more than a week. Freezer vessels can stay at sea for much longer, from months to sometimes even a year. Fresh catches are washed and cleaned and stored away in freezers with a temperature of minus 36 degrees Celsius. After 70 to 90 days, the frozen fish are brought back to the port to be further processed. Depends on the fishing vessel. If the, the fishing vessel is arriving from Indic Ocean or, or Pacific Ocean, uh, maybe 1, 100, 120, 130. As soon as fishing vessels come in with their catch, the fishes are sent to the auction house. In Vigo, the fish auctioning culture starts in the wee hours of the morning, selling off an immense quantity of fresh catch every morning. a puerto, en puerto se descarga o bien vía contenedores procedentes de otros países, de nuestros barcos que operan en países o bien del propio barco, el pescado se clasifica por pesos y por tamaños, al día siguiente de descargar los compradores van a ver el pescado, si la calidad es mejor, si la calidad es peor, si los tamaños se adaptan a lo que ellos quieren y luego va una subasta a la baja. Se reúne en una oficina, hay una empresa que se dedica a subastar el pescado y el subasta la baja, marca un precio máximo y de ahí al abajo. Y a la persona o a la compañía que le interese ese producto lo para, se queda con él y se lo lleva y lo paga, claro. Our main products are um, swordfish, and after uh, blue shark, eh, tuna, uh, mako shark and mahi mahi. Our market is directed to, to principally to, to the European community. Swordfish is so easy for us to sell in, in Italy eh, for one question of tradition. And here in Spain, for eh, example, blue shark, eh, we have one interesting market for the for the bodies of the of the blue sharks eh, because it's one tradition for the Spanish consumers eh, uh, to eat uh, blue shark, eh, uh, principally in the south of Spain, Andalusia. It's not possible to say what is the number of actions in one day. Uh, depends of, uh, of the arriving of the, of the fishing vessels. Eh? But one medium terminal is, uh, I think, uh, two, two, three by day. And the duration is 20 minutes, 25 minutes. The main demand is, uh, is from uh, this moment from Greece. From, from France, from uh, Croatia, from Russia, from Romania, uh, uh, Ukraine, in the, in, the, in, the mark, in, the, in the international market. But uh, here in Spain, um, it's a great demand uh, of, of, of this product, principally in the south of Spain. We belong one traditional family in the, in the, in the fish. Eh? My grandfather was um, seaman, my father was seaman. I'm and the first generation in my family that no seaman, but uh, for us it's, uh, it's so, so, so important that we continue it, eh? the work that uh, were uh, oldest made. For me it's the, the best work in the world. I love it. In this moment, the, the main problems are the crisis situation here in Spain, eh? in Spain and Europe. I repeat, we don't have pilot. We have one fleet, eh? sustainable, responsible, social control. Eh? Uh, we have control by uh, local authority. We have control by national authority. And, and we have finally one third control, eh? because uh, is the European uh, authority. We are so, so interesting in, in work uh, around with the ecologists. Eh? Eh? For us it's so, so important that the, the ecologists are working with us. Eh? But uh, for us it's so, 
so so important that the ecologists eh, no no shoot only for the one fleet. Eh? We are so so interested that the, the next generations, my sons eh, and the sons of my sons, eh, will can't eh, continue it in these in these operations. Eh? In order for the fishing business to be able to be passed down from generation to generation, the industry has to be safe and sustainable. While many rules and regulations have already been put in place, there is a new and upcoming rule. This new rule bans fishermen from finning sharks on board their respective vessels. Sharks that have been caught are expected to be brought back to the port with all of its body parts intact. This new rule further enforces the banning of live finning of sharks. The Commission is concerned uh, because it uh, considers that it is necessary more control because uh, it exists uh, species of sharks. They are very sensitive and then should be ensured that the finning is not practiced. And then the proposal of the Commission is that the landed should be together. No, uh, the thing should be with the rest of the body landed together. When it comes to the fishing industry, economics is pivotal in dictating the quantity, price and demand of the fish. When the demand exceeds the supply of fish, prices will increase. When this happens, fishermen are more likely to target these species of fish to gain more income. Bueno, lo que determina el precio del pescado En principio pues sería la ley de oferta y demanda, ¿no? O sea, más cantidad, menos precio y viceversa, menos cantidad, pues más precio. Pero es que últimamente este año pues eso no se cumple, ¿no? Porque no hay demasiada cantidad tampoco de pescado y los precios han bajado muchísimo. O sea, para rentabilizar los gastos de una marea de un barco de este tipo, con los precios que hay hoy en día nos es prácticamente imposible. Salimos a la mar para cubrir gastos solamente. O sea, el margen de beneficio es demasiado pobre, el precio es demasiado pequeño. One of the ways to ensure the continuity of a certain species of fish is to farm them. However, unlike small fish that can be easily taken care of, large fish such as sharks and swordfish cannot be easily maintained. It is not economically viable to keep sharks in captivity, as the costs in feeding them alone would exceed their respective market prices. Uh, f uh, for me, the, the principal factors, uh, I think, are offered, demand, and in this moment, the critical uh, financial situation here in Spain. Uh, in Spain, there are one critical situation, uh, is crisis, um, for us it's so, so, so difficult to make for operation in Spain and uh, out of Spain. With so many key factors affecting the prices of fishery products, companies like Carolinas do all they can to ensure quality and safety in everything they do to keep their business partners coming back to them to buy their products. One of the health uh, procedures that we have over here, because of the health authorities, uh, we have to know the fish being protected. And being protected is with plastic and with cloth. So you won't see anything being unloaded straight on the floor or without the cloth. It's not, it's not allowed. We can have health problems. Uh, we do it like that. So all the process, any, any uh, health authority can come here any time and stop any unloading if it's not correct. This is how we receive the fins.